particle has constant acceleration. Okay, uh, it's a constant acceleration problems are good. It's a good practice for um, doing 1D kinematics problem solving. And, uh, oh, I haven't looked at the hint yet, but let me just look at the hint. So in case you come up with two possible times, try to eliminate one on physical grounds. All right, I hope that's useful. <laughs> we'll see. Again, hints are all meant to be useful and they should be useful most of the time. If they're not useful, tell me so that I you know that's uh, uh, something I can uh, take back and possibly you know, improve on what kind of hint to you, we provided to you. So, um, but I guess one thing I want to make clear that we never try to do is we're not trying to be tricky with the hints. <laughs> so <laughs> please don't ignore it. Uh, so it has, says it has a constant acceleration of, um, so I'm just going to give this a label A. And for most of my problem solving, I'm going to be using the letter A and I'll plug in the numbers at the end. Um, it says it, initial velocity is one meters per second. So I'm going to give this a, num a, a symbol, V naught uh, for initial velocity. Uh, what time is it? It's uh, uh, at what? Okay. <laughs> Let me slow down and read. At what time? Okay, so that's what we are asking about. What is the time? Is it's a displacement five meters? Okay, so we are given the displacement x is equal to five point zero meters. All right. So it's asking for time. Yeah, and that makes sense. It's asking for time in seconds. All right, um, it, all right, uh, let me uh, just uh, diagram this so that I can at least uh, get my head around and uh, try to figure out if it feels like, um, <laughs> if, we, if it feels like that we, um, um, if it feels like that we understand all the um, information that's given, it, it, and if it feels like the problem has omitted uh, any uh, information, and I see the uh, comment in the chat, thank you, <laughs> that, uh, that's my goal here. So let me just throw the diagram. Um, it's, uh, um, I, you know, sometimes you, you know, don't, uh, yeah. I mean, sometimes, you know, you, you waste too much time just to doodling, but at least uh, at the starting place, doodling has a purpose. So it might feel like uh, you're just uh, doodling stuff, and that's fine. At least when you're starting out, when you don't know uh, what's uh, pertinent information and what's not, then um, it's, so you have uh, some particle that has some initial velocity, and it says constant acceleration. So it's gonna be moving in this direction. And I guess what I have to imagine is at some later time, this is going to have larger velocity uh, because it'll have, uh, it'll have some velocity as a function of time. That's what having constant acceleration means. And I guess as it continues to move to the right, at some point it'll reach a position where this total displacement in that amount of time will have been, let me label that T final. Uh, so the time that it's asking, let me give it a label, label of T final, uh, will be the displacement given, the five meters. So when I diagram it this way, then it feels to me like it, um, it has complete set of information. It's uh, telling me what velocity it's starting out at. And it, uh, it has told me how the velocity will be changing. So I think I should have enough information to figure this out. And um, if you don't have the sense yet, that's because you need more practice. <laughs> the practice that you need is, let me go to the textbook section so that I'm not just uh, leaving you here. Um, we do what I feel after decades of experience doing physics. Um, so that, and th you know, this is the section of the textbook where it's worth slowing down and really uh, making sure that you understand the strategy that's, uh, that's outlined for you. Uh, I hope this slows in time. Um, so uh, it's motion along straight line, 1D kinematics, and there's a motion with a constant acceleration. 
And when you look at it, um, what you will have seen in this section is they should have derived uh, what we call kinematics formulas. This is formula you might have seen in a previous physics class. If not, that's great. Uh, we have formulas derived here. So it goes through all this, all this, and, um, and th you know, these are sometimes useful. Um, but what I'm trying to rush to is the, um, oh, and this is a formula that you'll be using from time to time. It's uh, the, um, it's, uh, the expression that describes how your velocity changes from the initial to some final value as a result of the acceleration. You should read the textbook for all the detailed explanations. And uh, solving for final position. So this is the one that actually derives a formula that you'll find useful from time to time doing kinematics problems. And this is the one I actually plan to use. So let me actually just snip that so I can paste that in. Um, so, I, so, you know, one is <laughs> just to caution you, one thing I don't recommend that you do, which might look like what I'm doing right now, is that you just skim through the textbook, searching for formulas which you think are applicable. I mean, I can't stop you from doing that, but you won't gain the deeper understanding when you do that. I do recommend that you actually read it through the textbook. But since I, this is not my reading out loud uh, demonstration, this is me just to do the problem solving. So I found the formula that I recognize as being relevant. So I'll use that right now. And this is another formula that might be useful in a different question. But for the question I'm working on right now, it's asking for time. So I see this formula as being useful. So uh, having gotten that information from the textbook, then what I'm going to do is, um, is oops, what I'm going to do is try, uh, what I'm going to do is um, try to write out mathematical expression, which will allow me to answer this question. So uh, let me rewrite this a little bit. The way it's written, it doesn't quite immediately apply to the problem that, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, let me rewrite it a little bit. I prefer to write it this way. I prefer to move this over to the left-hand side so that I have x minus x naught on the left-hand side is equal to v naught t plus one half a t squared. The reason I prefer this is because I can assign meaning to this very clearly that matches up with the question directly. This uh, uh, change in position is the displacement. So, um, so the question has given us what this left-hand side is. That's a known value of five meters. So I have that. So looking at the right-hand side, um, um, so I know V naught. I know acceleration. Oh, so I don't know time and um, time, of course, in quadratic. So uh, I need to apply quadratic formula. I guess that's what the hint was getting at. The hint was telling me something about how if you have a more than one answer, you know, second order polynomial, I'm gonna have two roots possibly. So okay, I'll have to apply quadratic formula, solve it, see what I get, and <laughs> eliminate something on physical basis. So this is the quadratic formula. I hope uh, you have it memorized. If not, now is a great time to memorize it. Um, and uh, what the quadratic formula says is, uh, let me rewrite this um, into the form that I'm gonna be using. So the, the standard form for quadratic equation is, um, so one half A, this is what I'm going to label capital A, T squared, the highest order term, plus V naught T, this is what I'm going to call B, and uh, I have to move this uh, to the back to the same side as the other. So it's gonna be, um, uh, let me put it this way, plus x naught minus x. I swap the order because of that there's minus sign. So this is what I'm calling C is equal to zero. This is the standard form for quadratic uh, expression to which I can now use the quadratic formula. The solutions for T that satisfy this uh, expression here is uh, given by this formula, the quadratic formula. T is equal to, 
Um, minus b uh, plus minus square root of <laughs> b squared minus 4ac, I remember that part, uh, divided by um, 2a. So this is the quadratic formula. Okay, yeah, so, uh, so I need to just plug in the numbers and um, uh, let me do it this way. So in, in this question, actually, I have all the numbers here right away. I'm given the B, this is my one meter per second. Uh, I have my A, this is my uh, one half A, or I guess, so doing that in my head, it's 1.75. Uh, my C, that should be um, so X not minus X. So C should actually be minus five. This is something you might be careful about. Um, so uh, we do all these signs that this ends up being, uh, four AC ends up adding something here. Um, and so let me actually do this in, um, this is something that I don't mind you doing on homework and I might even recommend it, is to use all from alpha. Uh, because it, um, using all from alpha, it kind of, one, it avoids a lot of the mistakes you could be making on a calculator. It makes things easier. So, um, so, so, and it all from alpha and shows you how it interprets your input. So if you made any mistake, it's easier to see. So minus one, let me do plus first. Plus square root of uh, one squared minus four times a, 1.75 times minus five divided by two times a. Uh, 1.75. All right. And there's the answer there, but just uh, the one benefit of all from alpha is when you press enter, it actually tells you how it interpreted your input. So if you made a mistake, it's easier to see. So it says, all right, 1.428, whatever. So if you put in 1.43, it'll grade that as being correct. And um, so what was it talking about? Oh, so it's plus, there might be a minus sign or um, now, when you do that, then um, you have the answer of minus two. And this is what the hint was getting at, that um, you will come up with the two possible times. And the, what it means by physical grounds is, what does this minus time mean? Is Well, it's time that didn't actually exist in your actual physical setup. In your actual physical setup, it starts out with a t equals zero. So, um, so only the positive time here is meaningful. That's why when you look at the answer, it gives you the positive time. The negative time, it does have meaning. It's just not a physical one in this context because what it means is you kind of have to imagine this motion having started from negative infinite, or negative infinite time. Then uh, you kind of have to be imagining having started out with some uh, negative velocity and with the positive acceleration, it eventually comes to a stop and then starts accelerating to the right when it reaches one, not right, when it accelerates to the right, when it reaches one meter per second, that's your t equals zero. So if you kind of roll back your clock, you have that negative answer of minus two seconds. And I mean, there are situations where that could be physically meaningful, but not with the situation that we are describing here. Okay. Uh, it says, uh, what is its velocity at the time? So once you have the time, then it's uh, kind of easy. Oh, that's where you would use this other equation that I kind of skipped over. You would use this e expression here, velocity as a function of time. So you have V naught one, you have acceleration, and you now have the time. So you plug in the time. Uh, you can plug in 1.43, and then you plug that on the end. Can I do this in my head? Uh, one. So one plus 3.5 times 1.4, I don't know, it's gonna be, I want to say what 3.5 times 1.43 is gonna be close-ish to, I don't know, five. So the answer here should be close to six, give or take one, <laughs> let's check. Okay, oh, well, six. All right, so it's gonna be six. <laughs> So, so yeah, oh uh, yeah, and there's actually a second way to do this, uh, which would be to use um, this V squared formula. But um, for this particular question, since you already have the time, using V squared formula is probably actually more work.